Let's go. All right. So we are at uh, it's 2023. We are at Nutanix Next in Chicago. Chicago. This is the first in-person Next in uh, since the pandemic. Three years, you know, to get customers together again. It's been awesome. Well, this is your first Next. <laughs> it is my first Next. How are you enjoying the experience? <laughs> Well, it's you know better than I've ever expected. I mean, the idea of customers coming together and sharing ideas. I mean, first off, because we haven't done this in a while, mm -hmm. there's a lot of pent up interest, right? And sure. uh, you know, people are really excited about meeting senior leaders. Um, people want to go talk about the futures. People want to talk about existing issues they have, right? And so that exchange rate, it's creative, it's unplanned, and that's really special. One of the things that strikes me about Next, and I noticed this, I went to my first Next, this is my third one. Oh, cool. In uh, New Orleans, maybe five years ago. Uh -huh. It's your customers, I don't want to say cultish, but <laughs> your customers love you. Uh, well, maybe you not know, Lee, but they love Nutanix. <laughs> it uh, is interesting, right? I mean, uh, unsolicited, right? The feedback about the support team. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's number one every time, right? And why is that? Because I think, you know, customers realize that when you actually respond, you know, when there's an issue, that's when brand loyalty is built. Sure. Right. You know, I started my career actually in a like mm -hmm. major appliances where when nothing happened, it turned out like there was no brand loyalty. It's right. when a problem happens and you fix it. Right. And so this is what customers have experienced. Right. And in infrastructure, this is really important. And it's not just words. I think Nutanix is maybe the only company that I follow, only tech company. Yeah. That you publish your MPS score out we do. on your quarterly infographic when you do earnings. Yeah. And that 90, right? Yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't realize it, it ranges from minus 100 to plus 100. So the fact that we're at 90 here, right, is it's it's all about, it's not it's not even just being satisfied, right? right. These are people who are enthusiastic to your sense, right? Yeah. They're actually promoting. And, you know, many times our customers are here selling our products to each other. And this is a customer-centric event. I do a lot of tech uh -huh. events, and, and a lot of times it's all about technology sessions, how to better use the right. product. Yesterday you had the uh, Big Partner Summit. Uh, it was awesome, right? Yeah. I saw signs for, yeah, Partner Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you listen. Yeah. Well, and, you know, this is the opportunity for yeah. partners, for example, to right? talk about, hey, which things are we doing well? Which things could we improve, right? And so that dialogue is really what I think makes for an active engagement. Well, here here was my big... Uh, my big aha. Yeah, conference. tell me. I, go, I do a lot of these conferences. Yeah. And, and usually you get up and you try to generate a lot of excitement about sure. a few features. <laughs> yeah. Right. You guys stood up on stage and you were on stage <laughs> this morning talking about Project Beacon, which is very cool. Uh, a new, not a new strategic direction, but a focused. Yeah. Uh, aptly named, I guess. Beacon. Well, I think um, you know, your tanks has a long history of starting off with an integrated approach, mm -hmm. which is actually the most you know, let's call it the, the easiest way for customers to consume something. And then we peel it apart so that you've got more customer choice. I'll give you some right. examples, right? We started off with an appliance business, then we peeled it off so it was, you know, software only, so you could have choice of server. And then we peeled it off a little bit further, so you had choice of cloud location. So right. now it was multi-cloud in nature, right? Mm -hmm. And then we peeled it off so you could take VMs and now treat containers the same way with our right. Nutanix data services for Kubernetes, right? Uh, what Project Beacon does is opening the dialogue, making sure that customers realize the lock-in they're potentially yes. engaging in yes. when they do PaaS-level services. And by that, I mean in data and cloud. application yeah. services. Yeah. yeah, so if you go do that, don't ignore the fact that the switching costs are very high, right? And so the idea is, hey, think about that strategically and start classifying your applications. Some it'll make perfect sense, right? To go be single cloud in nature, but others you might want to be thinking, particularly open source databases. That's what we demonstrated right, right, here, right? right? Our NDB as a service, as a demonstration, is the idea that those databases, you may want to either move them over time, you may want to have like an expansion capability in time, or it may be that you want to optimally locate them and have that consistent operating model backed up by portable licenses and integrated security. Well, here's what I like about it. Yes, I like the choice, yeah. right? Um, because I think something like 70% of enterprises use the cloud <laughs> or use more than one cloud. Right. Right? But it's really That's about, reality. But it's really about simplifying. Nutanix has always been about simplifying the experience for the IT practitioner. Right. Right? And that's what you're doing. Instead of now learning tool sets for AWS and GCP and on-prem and GreenLake, <laughs> I've got one console. Well, it's funny. You know, I was talking about the race for talent. Mm -hmm. Right. And how do you get talent? And right. do you need specialized talent or do you basically take talent that's more generalized in nature? Right. 
was talking to somebody who uh, was saying, you know, they're out in the Midwest and they're like, hey, we, we don't, we can't find talent. We have to grow it. Right. <laughs> and this idea, right, we're taking and basically building talent. And once you build that, now you have operating leverage. Right. Because the same identical operating model that you have in the on-prem world can extend wherever servers run. Right. Extend out to the edge, extend out to the public cloud. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, IT should be in the business of advancing digital transformation. <laughs> and the more they have to think about the infrastructure, the less they're doing that. Right. Well, this so, is more refining, right? Yeah. People ideally want to have the apps at the top of the org structure, mm -hmm. right? This infrastructure should be serving the apps and getting out of the way. And that's what we're trying to basically help customers do. And, you know, to the extent that you've got data services, you want to make sure they work on any infrastructure. That's product beacon, right? Mm -hmm. The idea that you use server-based software defined means you've got the same operating model wherever you want of your hybrid multi-cloud estate. So this, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Yeah. Um, all of this was designed to simplify operations. Yeah. But it's got a secondary benefit, which is becoming more important, which is sustainability. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's a good uh, point. I can't make my hardware any more efficient usually, right? <laughs> but maximizing the efficiency of that hardware is, yeah. is a key element. And Nutanix has talked a lot about that. Yeah, um, I mean, we're helping show that you could reduce 35% mm -hmm. in power, uh, like across, let's say, a typical three-tier uh, configuration. And the way, I mean, it's not too hard to imagine, right? You remember when we used to have separate scanners and printers mm -hmm. and faxes right. and your copiers, right? And that, that became an all-in-one, right? That idea that, mm -hmm. hey, I've got one thing that I'm managing, powering, cooling, right. form factor, right? right? So that idea that we're consolidating, right, is really attractive from that standpoint. There's another important part, though, and that is that you're basically buying as you grow, right? So instead of basically planning out five years and saying, this is exactly what I need, People can't plan that far. No. They can't do it. And so what are they doing? Here's what they do. They double what they need and they double it again. And they're running at like, you know, 20% capacity utilization for the next five years. With this HCI model, right? You've got this idea of being able to scale out at server increments. Right. And you've right. got a better way to go and match your absolute actual needs. I want to talk about your customers a little bit. Sure. Are there verticals where Nutanix is just thriving? <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say... We do a lot of work around healthcare, mm -hmm. financial services, and the, let's call it public sector okay. market, right? Um, and the reason there, right, if you got customers with an enterprise mindset, right, trying to do scalable things, but they're also looking at, hey, how do I go and think carefully about TCO, right? Every good right. business model, right, is based on how, you know, what's the total cost of ownership here and what does the ROI look like over time? So those markets tend to be very powerful for us. And we've got dedicated sales teams serving each one of those. All right. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. The keynote's about to, <laughs> to kick back up. I yeah. think we're going to go see Tony Hawk. I don't know if he's going to ride a skateboard across the... Uh... I know. Maybe he's going to go and take a Nutanix Central thing oh, with him right around cool. and show the whole thing. It should be fun. So cool. well, thanks thank for you taking for, the time. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it's okay. been great to see you. Take care, Lee.